If you want to install the self-hosted version of Software 6 on, for example, the Timmy Hosting hosting provider, then this is the perfect video for you. Have fun! Hello and welcome to another tutorial. My name is Alexander Barton, I'm from Shop Studio and I want to show you how you can create a Shopware 6 installation where you can start your e-commerce journey. Let's jump into the screen and this is basically the end goal. So our goal is to really have a working Shopware 6 installation. And we want to achieve this goal by using Timmer Hosting. So firstly, we jump into Timmer Hosting and now I'm on the websites section of the ISP config administration. The first thing we have to do is of course to create a new website. There are two ways, either via website with a wizard, which is easier and we use this method. And the other button is add new website, which is more manual. So we use the website with a wizard. All right. So this is very practical and very handy. For example, if you want to clone the settings of maybe an existing website, and this saves time and practice, but we want to start from scratch. So we jump to the next configuration and we are setting the server to the only available option in this case. Um, it's the server Shop Studio one timmerserver.de. If you're an agent, of course, it might happen that you have multiple servers, but this is a different story. And um, now we select the customer, Shop Studio, in my case, and the IP address, I have only one available, is this one here. Of course, now we have to set a domain, the name of the shop basically. So our domain is called shopware6-test.shopstudio.io. Hard disk quota is minus one, basically this means unlimited. And the desired configuration, this is very important. We set it to Shopware 6. Timber Hosting is a very known hosting provider, at least here in Germany, for Shopware hosting. So you just set to configuration Shopware 6 and everything should work perfectly. We leave the settings here, number of databases, this is fine. Um, we can create an SSH account. This is important for the installation of the files later. Um, I can't set this to yes because somehow I have many installation and I reach to a limit that I can't add more SSH account, at least this way, but I can add it manually. I think this is just a bug. So I leave it to no. And this is very useful to send email to customer where you get the email um, with all your credentials, with the passwords, with of a database, um, of a website, and maybe of a uh, SSH user too, if you have selected yes here. So we keep this yes too, because it makes the installation easier. And now we click on save. And if we are searching for Shopware 6 test, we have an entry now. In our case, this is a subdomain, so we don't really need this www, so we set this to none. So we have we only keep this version and not two versions. Um, here's everything perfect. This is the latest PHP version in 2022. Desired configuration. We can enable Google Page Speed. This makes uh, the performance a bit better. There are, for example, ways to create uh, subdirectories with, uh, with software in it. For example, WordPress, if you want to host a blog, it's possible via the subfolder and design configuration or to change the document route. But we leave everything um, with the default settings. Now we check the redirects. Um, the redirects are useful, if, for example, if you have two versions of the website with www and one without. So can, you can create one SEO redirect, but in our case, we have a subdomain, we can skip this. But this one is very important, rewrite to HTTPS. It's very useful if your customers, of course, are visiting the HTTP version, which is unsecure by default, and they get redirect to HTTPS automatically. So we keep this on, but it's only working if your SSL is correctly configured but uh, here it's important that 
we first connect the DNS settings, basically the domain to the server, because if we don't do it, for example, we can't later install Let's Encrypt because Let's Encrypt uh, needs a valid connection to the server to verify the certificate. So we skip it for now but, and do it later. Here we have some statistics, nothing very important. Backups are done once a day. This is good. Um, but of course, they are like hosting providers, for example, AWS cloud hosting providers where the backups are done like every five minutes or sometimes up to the seconds. And here we have some more advanced options, but um, it's not very important because they are configured automatically because we have set here the desired configuration to Shopware 6. So we click on save and now we are here again. The next thing is to connect the DNS server uh, to this web hosting space so the domain is reachable. In my case, my DNS server is hosted in All Inkel. This is another German hosting provider and it's very cheap if you're like hosting multiple DNS entries and domains. So what I need for now is to copy um, this server here. And if I go to All Inkel, I can create a new DNS entry. Um, we set the name of the shop, shopware minus six minus test. Then in our case, we use a CNAME entry. And the CNAME entry is pointing to shopstudio1timmerserver.de. Now we save the entry. It's very important now that you wait three, four, five minutes because the DNS entries really need to propagate themselves across the world. So your browser basically knows um, where he can find the server um, which belongs of course to the domain. We have waited a little bit and the next step now before we can open the new domain is to enable the SSL certificate. So we click here on on. When we click on let's encrypt, this is fine with HTTP version two. And now we click on save and we need to wait again for Let's Encrypt to verify the ownership of the domain and the hosting. The certificate is valid. I got an email from Let's Encrypt that everything is ready. And now I have visited the website with a new domain and it's working. So the connection is secure, it's reachable, but you can see of course that Shopware is not installed. We instead get 404 not found. And this is because the server is ready, but the files are missing for Shopware. So the next step is to install Shopware, of course. But in order to do so, we need to connect to the hosting via SSH so we can execute some commands and download all the files directly into the right place. To connect via SSH, it's impo important to create a new SSH user. You maybe have created one with a add new website with wizard uh, if you clicked yes. In our case, we create a new one. So we go to shell users here, create a new shell user. Now it's important to choose the right website. So shop basics test and let's call the user underscore uh, shopware underscore test. We generate a password. We can keep everything as it is. And if you want to create a more secure SSH connection, it's recommended that you use the RSA public key method. So you have to create a public and a private key, uh, for example, via your terminal on your computer. And yeah, this is more secure, but it's a different topic, maybe for a different tutorial. And we click on save and we're searching for this user to see if everything is fine and it seems like the user was created with the following username. Now we need to connect somehow via SSH um, to the hosting. I already told you that there are multiple ways you can connect directly via your terminal on your Mac OS, Windows or uh, Linux or maybe use a different software. In my case I can really recommend to use Termius. This is a uh, Visual SSH, SSH connection manager uh, which, where you can just save all your connection and easily switch between, for example, multiple hosting providers without re-entering 
the password, remembering the connection details and more. And so I switched back to Termius and here I'm inside the hosts part of Termius and first I want to create a new group to keep everything st structured. So we name it Shopware 6 test. Now it's saved and we can see here that a new group was created. We click on this group and create a new host. And the address is of course our shop instance. Um, the password, I have copied it into the clipboard so I can just paste. And the username is this one here. So we copy it. And this should be everything for now. So we leave the screen, try to open the connection and everything worked as expected. We are now inside the server, the Timber hosting server. And I have a tip for you. You can, of course, open the website you have created. And if you scroll down to the extended settings, here you have a document route. And this is the path we need. So we copy it. Go back to Termius, change the directory, and are now inside the correct one. Here we can delete everything. So we delete all the visible files and all the invisible ones, but I think we don't have any. And we check it again. Everything is empty, this is perfect. Now we have to download all the Shopware 6 files. It's good if you go to the correct um, URL, it's shopware.com slash en slash download. And now you're on this download page. And here you can, for example, um, download it for free or update Shopware. But for example, it's also possible that we click here on the latest version. We will see now a history of all versions. For example, this is the latest one. Um, and we can go, of course, down to the older ones. But in our case, we use the latest version. And now we have here two buttons, install and update. Since we have a new shop, we have to use the install button. So we click here on um, copy the address of a link. Now we go back to Termius, enter VW get, and now the link. And now we will download a zip file containing the installation. So if you check the directories, we see, okay, we have a zip here. And now, of course, it makes sense to unzip it first. It will take a few seconds, I guess, because we have a lot of files in it. Ah, now we are done. And we see that we have more files now. These are the fundamental files for shopware. And now we remove the zip file because it's not necessary anymore. And we are fine, as you can see. The cool thing is, there's basically everything with downloading the files. If we go back to our domain, you can see that Shopware is available. So we switch to the English language and now we can start the configuration together. Now we click just on next and we see your system is ready for Shopware 6. No wonder we are losing, of course, Timmer hosting, which is already compatible with Shopware 6. We click next again. Now, I agree to the general terms and conditions of business, of course, we have no other choice. My recommendation here is because we need to configure the database that we change the local host to 127.0.0.1. It's basically the same, more or less, technically. Um, but it's better, for example, if you're a developer and later want to execute some terminal commands. I always got problems with local host, but with this equivalent, it's working. Now we need to find out the database user, password and the database name. If you have created your shop uh, via the wizard, you get an email from um, Timmer Hosting and all the credentials are in there. All right, here we go. If your username is correct and your password too, and you get it uh, from the email, you can just click on the database name and you get an auto completion here with a correct run mostly or basically because you're just connected with one with the specific credentials. 
And here everything is fine. Of course, there are some advanced settings, but it's not that important at the moment. And we can click on Start Installation. Shopware 6 has been installed. So we click on the Next button. And now we need to configure some shop details like the shop name, the initial administration user and so on. For the shop name, we just take Shopware 6 test in our case. And the email is test at, I don't know, test.com. System language is English. Default currency is Euro. United Kingdom as default country. You can, of course, add some available currencies too, but it's not very important in our case. And now the administration email, let's call it test at test.com. So basically the same as the shop email. The first name is Alexander Barton. And the login name is, I just uh, use the default one. So you click on next. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we can see that the shop is up and running. But a new model will appear with some more settings. So we can just continue clicking through. So we click next, we can install demo data or migrate your shop, but it's not important. This can be useful to, of course, connect your Shopware account. And it's important if you want to um, download extensions via the store. But we click skip for now because it's just a tutorial. Skip, finish. And now we are ready. Howdy, Alexander. One more tip, because if you are working with a self-hosted version and you want to um, download, for example, extensions or apps um, which were written for Shopware Cloud, there's one problem um, from my experience. If we go back to Termius, you can check our files in the Invisible 2. And there's a file called .env. This is basically a settings file. And I can really recommend that you um, Go down to app URL and check if the app URL is correct. Because if this URL is not correct, it's not possible for the apps, for the remote apps, which are not hosted on your uh, store, to communicate back because the yeah, domain, the URL is wrong. It looks maybe good because it's more or less the same, but HTTP and HTTPS is important too. So we change it to HTTPS. We save everything and refresh the shop. Nothing really changed, at least visually, but technically this is a major difference. And now everything is perfect. So you can start your e-commerce journey here. Hopefully you have learned a little bit how you can install your Shopware 6 shop on Timmer Hosting. And if you like a video, feel free to subscribe to the channel or leave a like because it's always a good thing for me as a newcomer. Thank you very much for watching and we see us in the next tutorial. Bye!